Hello guys, Saigon here, and today we're going to be looking at how to mount V's encoder for the FF Beast steering wheel. I'm making this quick tutorial to help walk you through the entire process. This is just going to be a better angled video for those of you who want to see how to actually assemble it. Hopefully this video makes the assembly process much clearer and helps you get your encoder set up without any hassle. So without further ado, let's get started. I'll quickly show a parts list for you guys who need some sort of a checklist for your parts, so feel free to take a screenshot. Alright, and with that out of the way, let's start with the tools and components. Alright, so you're going to want a couple of screwdrivers at your disposal, and make sure that they have multiple bits. Um, so I chose these two as they have a couple of different bits that I can use, and yeah. Next up, we're going to get ourselves an adjustable wrench. The one I have right here should work just fine. Next up, we're going to get some sandpaper or even a file would work. We're going to use this so that we can sand down the 3 printed mount and make sure that it fits inside of the stator shaft. And now for the components. And just to be clear, make sure that you have all your parts soldered, machined and ready to go. If not, keep watching and I'll tell you exactly what you need to get machined and so on. Alright, so first up the encoder. This is an MC601 magnetic encoder that I got from AliExpress. All links will be in the description. I've already gotten mine soldered and glued into V's mount, so make sure that you do this first before you begin anything. And speaking of V's mount, make sure that it goes all the way inside of the stator hole that you've drilled. In my picture right here, you can see that it's a little bit sticking out. You do not want this and you want it to sit flush with the stator hole. Next up is the diametrically magnetized magnet. If this magnet came with your encoder, there's no real need to worry and you'll be just fine. Next up is the 3D printed plate that will screw into the magnet carrier all of which I've printed off of V's printables, which I will link in the description. The magnet plate and carrier just snap right together and then we can screw these together with a couple of screws and more of that to come later. Next is the motor housing with the center hole drilled out and then the six holes on the outside. And then we got some M5 25mm bolts, as well as some M5 lock nuts. Next up is the quick release or steering wheel adapter. Although optional, it is better to add one. You'll also need the back plate from the motor housing. And finally, the stator. All right, so that was all the parts. Uh, let's now see what we need machined. All right, so for this first part, grab your motor housing. You'll need to drill a hole in the center to create sort of a window for the encoder. I drilled a 24 millimeter hole. It does not have to be perfectly centered, but just large enough to give access to the encoder. Mine is a little wonky, but it should do the job. Next, you want to drill six holes in a 70 millimeter pattern, each with a five millimeter diameter. So for this one, I'll be using a steering wheel adapter. You can use whatever you want, but yeah. I've also linked a drill guide that my friend Spikey made that I used to drill these six holes, as well as a pilot hole for when I eventually drilled the 24 millimeter hole in the middle. These holes will allow you to mount your steering wheel, adapter, quick release, or whatever extension you use. And we're just going to flip this over. The way you want to use this is you just want to take this on top and all you just want to do is push it into that and then just push it down. And uh, there you go. And it just fits, sits right on top of the bearing and you can drill those five millimeter holes without any issue. Now for the stator. For V's model, the hole on the encoder should be eight millimeters. If you're drilling this yourself, try to be very precise. In the worst case that your hole does uh, end up closer to 9 or 10 millimeters, don't panic. It'll be just fine. I did mine in a lathe, so I had no issues. If you do have access to a machine shop or a school shop, I highly recommend to lay this part as you need it to be dead center. 
Also, one more thing is when you're drilling down, uh, drill inwards about 40 millimeters so that you make the shaft hollow because we need to put the encoder wires through and the encoder uh, mount that we 3D print sits right on top of this. In my video here, you can see that I'm putting it on top and it's not going in all the way. So we're going to have to use either a file or some sandpaper to just get that in all the way. Oh, and I almost forgot, before you even start drilling, make sure you take out these three phase wires from the inside so that they don't interfere with your drilling and they don't get cut off. Make sure that you also cover the stator when drilling or going on a lathe to prevent any little scraps from short circuiting your stator. Here's a picture of how I did it on a lathe. And here's a video of me getting it laid at a machine shop. Alright, so here is the encoder glued into the mount. The mount is designed specifically for this encoder size. Now, before installing this, I soldered and hot glued this into the encoder mount. And for the wires, I used, a, I used the hall wires, which you would have ripped out already when you were taking apart the hoverboard wheel. Alright, awesome! After you've got all that done, you're finally ready to begin the assembly. Let's begin with the assembly. So first up you need the motor housing, followed by the center disc piece, and then your QR or hub spacer. And then for tools, you want to get your screwdriver, your adjustable wrench, and six M5 bolts and lock nuts. All right, so we want to take the black disc with the hole. Uh, this piece essentially acts as a large washer, which holds the magnet carrier in position. Now sandwich the between the spacer and the housing. Now we're going to hold this down and flip it around. Now secure this in place with these M5 bolts. Just put each of them one by one through, uh, like so. All right, now do this for the rest of the bolts. So you just want to hold it on its side and then put those bolts inside. And you just want to do this for all of them. So I'll just speed this up very quickly. All right, that's good. Now you want to take your um, M5 lock nuts and you just want to screw them into each um, single bolt. You just want to screw them until they kind of stop and then we're just going to use the adjustable wrench later to tighten them all the way. Alright, so after you do that, you want to get your adjustable wrench. And with the adjustable wrench, we're just going to put it on top of the lock nut here. And you just want to adjust it so that it's fitting the lock nut. And you just want to make sure that's tight. And then you're just going to want to hold it with your hand. And you're going to get your screwdriver and we're going to screw it fr from the inside. And we're going to do this for every bolt. So I'll just speed this up and yeah. All right, and that uh, is the motor housing complete. Take a minute to double check everything and make sure that it's all tight and, and if all your connections are good, then awesome. Let's move on to the next part, which is the stator. All right, and before we put the stator back into the motor housing, we're gonna take these phase wires and route them back through the shaft so that we can put this back inside the motor housing. You want to start off by making a U shape on the wire. 
So just make that U shape just like so. And then you're going to go to the hole on the bottom of the stator and just route that inside of the shaft. And you just want to keep making this U shape and trying to push it up. So I'll quickly just speed this up. And now once you see it at the top, you can just pull it. Uh, you might need to just set this down and then use both sides to try and get that out. And that's one wire done. And just two more to go now. Alright, so now you want to do this for the other wires. Uh, I'll quickly do this and I'll be right back. Alright, and there we go. Your stator is now ready to be put back into the motor housing. Nice job. Alright, with that done we can put the stator back into the motor housing. Please try to be very cautious here as you can very badly hurt yourself, so don't hold it weirdly. And just hold it from your QR or the bottom and you should be just fine. So we're going to take it like so. We're just going to hover it over each other and slowly just lower it until it snaps. Just like that. And yeah, that's it. Alright, so at this point you want to grab a file or some sandpaper and just sand or file down your encoder mill because this is the last time you're probably going to see it before putting it in the encoder. Hello guys, me from the future here. And while editing my video, I, uh, I came across that I didn't really explain how to tape the encoder. So um, what you want to do is get some masking tape, like so. And basically you want masking tape and not electrical tape. I found masking tape to work better. So what you want to do is you want to take your masking tape and pretty much tape a little bit to your encoder wires like so. And then you want to take some sort of a longer or even stronger wire and just attach it somewhere here and then tape it yet again and make sure it's really tight because you're going to be pulling this out of the stator shaft. So once you've got all that done, you're good to go. Alright, so as you can see here, I'm about to pull it out. Um, there we go. Those wires are now out of the stator. The wire just makes it easier to bring out, and then you just want to push your encoder back into the shaft a little bit. Um, this took me a couple of tries to do. I should just get my thumb in there and just push it down. As you can see here, I'm just using my thumb to push that encoder back into the shaft. And my filing should have done just the job. And now you can see that it's sitting flush. Alright, now you want to grab your back plate. And we're going to reattach this to the back of the motor housing. And finish up this build. So we're just going to route the wires uh, through the back uh, hole where the bearing is. Alright, so you just want to make sure that you position these holes over these screw holes and then you can push it down firmly. Just make sure that it's over these screw holes because it does take quite a little bit of effort to remove again. After you've done that, you are ready to screw it in. Alright, now we're good to screw all those screws back in. So just do it one by one and you'll be good. I'm just missing a screw here because I misplaced it, but um, it sh I will probably just replace it later. Now we can finally finish off this project by screwing in the magnet carrier into the black disc piece. But before we do that, we're going to take a moment to check if we have any interference from these six bolts that we screwed on at the very beginning. So you want to hold the shaft with one hand and then rotate the motor housing. If you feel like there's any interference or grinding, remove everything and return to step one and make sure you buy some shorter or some countersunk bolts. Alright, let's grab our magnet carrier and now we're going to put this inside of our mount right on top of the encoder. So, 
uh, you want to just make sure you've already press fit that magnet and now you just want to push it inside on top of those three holes. So for the screws, I really recommend that you get some self-threading ones and not the ones that I'm using. I was only able to find these and I was able to uh, kind of thread those holes beforehand so I can just screw these in and I'll be just fine. But I really highly recommend that you get some self-threading ones to get a more tighter fit. Alright, so now I'm just going to be screwing these into the mount by just holding them with my thumb and then using a m magnetic screwdriver to just get those in. It did take me a couple of tries, but you will eventually get it and you will succeed. And there you go. That is V's encoder mount. I hope you found this video helpful. If you do have any questions for me or about the project, drop a comment down below here or head over to the FFB's Discord also linked below to have any of your questions answered. All links will be in the description. Thanks for watching, signing out.